What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Drop a like down below because I already know you're gonna love it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Shout out to everybody who used my NBA lineup from the video yesterday. If you did so, you profited in everything you entered. So shout out to that man. Shout out to the NBA lineup. That was fire. Um, my MLB, I did. I had an unsuccessful night with MLB because let me explain what happened because it fucking annoyed the shit out of me, right? So about an hour before game start, game start, I go ahead and send my lineups out to everybody. I send the two variations to everybody, and. Then I realize after I go through and do all of that, that none of my emails went through. So I had to go back and email all of them again. Not only that, but after the second time that I emailed all of them again, come to find out two guys from my lineups are, are scratched. The lineup came out right after I finished and two of my guys that I had in both of my lineups, I had both of these guys in both lineups and they both were scratched. I had to go back in, design a whole team, because most of the time, if two guys get scratched and you have to change them out, you end up having to change more than just those two guys because you just got to balance shit out. You got to work it out again. And it's tough to get your mojo back in those situations. I hate when that happens because you're sitting there, especially when you, you've got lineup subscribers relying on you. I'm sitting there stressing like, damn, I got to hurry. I got to get this shit together, whatever, whatever. And then I send it. I, I, I was able to send it back to him right on time with like 30 minutes to go until the game started. But I really didn't wasn't able to all of the research that I did and everything leading up to the night really kind of went out the window because I ended up going with people I didn't even consider because I was able to get them in my lineup more balanced. And, you know, I had to hurry and just make adjustments. And that happens in DFS sometimes, but it's just aggravating as hell when it does happen. So obviously me being the person I am, I can't let the squad lose like that. So everybody who got a lineup from me yesterday is getting to the, tonight's for free. Because I don't do that losing shit like that. That's not fair for me to sit there and, you know what I'm saying, not hook you guys up when it was something that we can't help. You know what I'm saying? It was a situation that y'all just can't, there's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. And I'm here to help people win. I'm here to, you know, help the people that just don't have the time to play to set DFS lineups, but yet they love DFS and want something to follow. I got you on that. And I get that totally. My main objective is making y'all money though. So when a situation like that happens, something we can't control, then of course I'm going to have to hook y'all up. You know what I'm saying? So everybody who got a lineup, hit me up either on Twitter at cam underscore ATL for your uh, free lineup sometime throughout the day. Just remind me and I will send it to you or email me uh, to my email dfssquadcam at gmail.com and let me know and I will hook everybody up for free. You do not got to pay for tonight, man. Fuck all that losing shit. We don't do that over here in the DFS squad. But as you know, because of yesterday, I am giving my whole entire playoffs away. You guys got the likes up to like 189. Shout out to everybody who watches the videos and subscribe to the channel. You guys are awesome. Um, we used to get over 100 consistently. It slowed down. But hey, it is what it is. I feel the love and I know you guys appreciate everything. I know it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Maybe the likes dropped a little bit. That's fine. I understand. But when y'all need to come together, y'all come together and show out. So 189 likes, that's ridiculous, that's great, great job everybody, good job, and I'm going to stick by my word and I'm going to give my NBA lineups. Let's go ahead and do back to back, like we're on the cover of Lethal Weapon, alright? Back to back with this NBA shit, so here we go guys, let's get straight into it. At the point guard position, I have my boy John Wall, pretty much through this whole series, John Wall has been my go-to guy in this matchup. Because Atlanta can't stop point guards, and Wall is just a monster, especially in playoff atmosphere. So the dude's got 60-plus potential. He's got to be in the lineup. I absolutely love him. Lock him in. At the shooting guard position, Marcus Smart. He's a guy that's kind of a mediocre price at 5300 but he's been consistently getting over 30-plus throughout the playoffs. Um, Chicago has no answer for him. 
Marcus Smart puts up in multiple categories. He's a very good defender as well. He hassles guys all the time on defense. He's a very good defensive player as well. Uh, he just he fills the stat sheet in every way. So he doesn't really got to score crazy to get you value. So that's uh, I love people like that that can get me value without even having to score. I absolutely love it. Marcus Smart's a beast. Lock him in against Chicago. He's been very consistent, man. Now, next spot, Gordon Hayward. He showed out last game, man. He looked absolutely amazing last game. Let's go ahead and recap that real quick. He dropped 48.5 fantasy points. Here's the thing. Going into the matchup, I knew that Gordon Hayward was a mismatch for the Clippers. Okay, the Clippers strong suits are they have a good power forward who's solid on defense and Blake Griffin. Chris Paul is a solid defender up at the point. J.J. Redick is a decent defender on the perimeter. But they struggle guarding small forwards. It's been a position you kind of want to exploit them with uh, whenever you get the possible chance. So I'm definitely going to do that. I think Gordon Hayward keeps this up especially at home in Utah. I love Gordon Hayward to have another very good game here. At 7,900, my boy Gordon Hayward is locked in. At the power forward position, Otto Porter. Now, here's the thing with Atlanta. Now, we all know Otto Porter runs the small forward. They're just allowing him to be played at power forward, which is great. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Atlanta struggles a lot against small forwards and on the perimeter. Otto Porter is a very good perimeter shooter, and he is a small forward. So everything adds up perfectly for Otto Porter to have a fantastic game here. 30-plus points for show. I love Otto Porter. Get him in your lineups. Al Horford has been a monster down low against Chicago. Robin Lopez has no answer for him. Al Horford is a very good scoring center. Okay, He's not too much into getting huge rebound numbers. Even though uh, Chicago is not too great in that area, he could definitely be taking advantage of that area. But Al Horford's just not known to be a big rebounding guy. He's a scoring center. Okay, He's very good with the ball in his hands. No homo. He's very good with it. All right, So he's awesome. Al Horford has got to be put in play. He has been doing fantastic throughout the series. I absolutely love him here. He is definitely in play for me. At the second guard position, as you see, my boy, Rodney Hood. The last couple games, Rodney Hood is really starting to get his scoring together. Consistent. 18 on the 23rd. He scored 16 on the 25th, which equaled out to be 28 fantasy points both games. I expect that type of outcome once again here. I absolutely love Rodney Hood. I mean, I would rather I would rather have my guy going against Redick or a, my small forward going against the Clippers than having my point guard guarded one-on-one -on -one with against Chris Paul in a playoff situation or my power forward having the tussle with Blake Griffin all game. I absolutely love Rodney Hood, and he has done very good the last couple games because it's op uh, Gordon Hayward playing so well is opening the floor up, and he's getting some open shots. I absolutely love Rodney Hood to have another great game. I'm thinking 30-plus here in this one. So run up Rodney Hood for sure. Toreen Prince at the next four position. You got to take a little bit of a price dip here, but I love Toreen Prince. All right, he's been getting solid minutes throughout this series. You can definitely bet on him getting about 25, like he's averaged throughout the playoffs here. You can definitely bet on that. Washington, a point of their defense that you can definitely take advantage of is the small forward. Otto Porter is not the greatest defender. Small forwards have really been banging him around. Toreen Prince is a good scoring small forward. He's aggressive on defense. He can fill up the stat sheet plenty of ways too and very quickly. So even if he's not, he's off scoring wise, he can fill it up other ways. So I like Toreen Prince to be a solid safe guy along with all these big name, uh, big scores I got in here. All right. And last but not least, Tim Hardaway Jr. Now, Tim Hardaway Jr. is the only player in this lineup I'm a tad worried about here. But this is what I have in my mind. This is what I'm thinking here, guys. All right. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a fantastic scorer. We have seen him multiple times throughout the season break out out of nowhere for a 40-plus fantasy point day game. All right. This is going to be a big-time game here against Washington. They're going to need all the scoring they can get. They're going to need some firepower 
on that Atlanta offense. And Tim Hardaway Jr. brings that for him. All right, he's going to get 30 plus minutes here in this game. I expect him to snap out of this little point drop he's been dealing with, get back in the 20 point scoring range. I expect 25 to 30 out of Tim Hardaway here. Run up Tim Hardaway. And that is it, guys. That is my NBA lineup John Wall, Marcus Smart. Gordon Hayward, Otto Porter, Al Horford, Rodney Hood, Toreen Prince, and Tim Hardaway Jr. Lock it in, guys. Good luck. Let's go back to back on that ass in the NBA, and let's go ahead and dominate MLB. I'm feeling really, really good about my building blocks for MLB, so let's get straight into it. All right, guys. I am back. Let's go ahead and get straight into the MLB High Five, okay? In the morning, I will be posting the blog where I will cover other things that I do not cover. I cover more in the blog than I will be covering in the video. I give you guys the high five, of course, but in the blog, I will make sure you guys are aware of all of the hitter-friendly ballparks to stack batters in. I'll show you which pitchers you definitely need to stack against in Bully. Um, I'll show you other guys that I didn't mention in the high five that are very good plays to me and all that good stuff, man. I'll add in an extra picture that I don't talk about here. So all that good stuff. Check out the website, greenlightdfs.com. Definitely making moves in the DFS community, man. It has been getting hella views. Everybody loves it and I'm super happy about it, man. So shout out to everybody. I'm glad y'all like it. I did it for y'all. So I'm glad it's working out, and I'm glad everybody is excited about it. All right? Make sure you go to the 24-7 live DFS chat that we have on the site as well. We got that. You don't have to pay shit to be on the website. Just at any point you want to talk DFS or get any type of advice, you can go to our live chat on the website and talk DFS to anybody. All right? Now, let's get straight into this high five. I'm going to start it out with my boy, Scherzer. My boy, Max Scherzer. He has been very solid throughout the year already with a 25, 27, 30, and 30. He got His last game was against this same Mets team. The only difference is now he is at home in Washington. I absolutely love it here, man. Look, the Mets have a horrible average at the plate, okay? They are bottom in the league at making contact with the ball, okay? They are batting a 208 batting average, guys. All right, they're bottom in the league at runs scored. They're bottom in the league at OPS. Okay, the only thing they are decent at is getting their home runs, but they are not going to be drilling home runs on Max Scherzer. Let's be real. He is by far the biggest talent on the mound tonight. All right, there will not be anybody drilling two home runs in this game by themselves. Okay, don't expect Cespedes to go out there and hit two home runs. Don't expect people to be hitting home runs against Max Scherzer. So I absolutely love Scherzer. He is by far the most talented pitcher on this slate. I'm very, very confident, and I'm very, I'm feeling very. He's one of those guys that he's got some good upside with it, upside with his strikeout potential here, and I just absolutely love how safe he feels. Like, you lock them in and you pretty much know what you're going to get. You're going to get a good outing out of them. You're not going to get a bust game out of them. He's one of those type of pitchers, man. Just like Sale. You know what I'm saying? Going into last night's game, I knew, one thing I knew in my lineups for sure that I could uh, rely on was that Sale was going to put up quality numbers because of that strikeout potential. And Scherzer's got some great strikeout potential as well. He makes me very confident. I've got to have him in my lineups at 12-7. He is by far the best option at pitcher. All right. At my second pitcher spot, as you guys know, if I go big dog at my first pitcher, I try to go a little kind of mid-tier, a little under mid-tier with my second pitcher. All right. My choice for my second pitcher is going to have to be, let me find him. Where the fuck did he go? Here he is, my boy Tim Adelman. All right, he has been solid throughout the year so far. He hasn't gone crazy, but he has been solid so far. All right, he's going against a St. Louis team that just played two games in one day. All right, they're going to be a little tired. They're going to be a little worn out here. All right, 
I absolutely love Tim Adelman here. He's going to get his first 20-plus DraftKings points game here. He's going against a St. Louis offense that just is not really good. Let's just be honest with it, all right? They're just not that good, okay? They are bottom in the league at average. They're bottom in the league at runs. They're bottom in the league at OPS. They're bottom in the league at home runs. And Adelman has been very solid against two offenses that are better than St. Louis, let's be honest. Chicago is one of the best offenses in the, league, in the league. Milwaukee has been hot as of late. All right, Milwaukee has been hot as of late with Thames coming around going crazy, with Shaw hitting well in that lineup. Milwaukee is hitting very, very well right now. So for him to do so well against two teams that are very good offensively, that gives me some good faith, especially at only 6,400. I feel very confident in it. He's got some good strikeout ability. Okay, keep in mind against Milwaukee where he got 15.8, he only threw 57 pitches, guys. He only threw 57 pitches and he still got 15.8. I absolutely love the guy, man. I honestly think he's got 25 plus potential here against St. Louis who just played two games last yesterday. All right. I absolutely love Adelman. Lock him in at my second pitcher option. All right. Next, my boy, Freddie Freeman. All right. I absolutely love my boy, Freddie Freeman. All right. Not only is he in a very hitter-friendly park at Milwaukee, but he has had a great history against this pitcher. An amazing history against Chase Anderson, guys. All right? He has gone, I mean, it's not a huge sample size, but you got to just, you got to listen to this. He has gone three of five. One of those three hits went for a home run, and he is batting a 600 average versus Chase Anderson. Okay, with his history and how solid he has been against Chase Anderson, mixed with the fact that he is in the second most hitter friendly ballpark in the MLB behind Colorado. I am buying in the Freddie Freeman. I am locking him in and I'm just going to take a nap and not even think of it anymore. That's how confident I am. I'm just going to go ahead and just put him in my lineup and not have any other batters in my lineup and just leave it alone because Freddie Freeman's going to get 40 by himself. No, for real though, for real though, okay, I'm exaggerating. You guys know how I love to do that sometimes. But let's be real, Freddie Freeman definitely has 30 plus fantasy point upside here against a player that he has great history against who is not too good of a pitcher and he's at a ballpark that is second most friendly to batters definitely hop on that take advantage of freddie freeman man he has absolutely been amazing this year and he will continue and he will blow up here against milwaukee and chase anderson at third base a game that i absolutely love and i am buying into as well as the atlanta milwaukee game is colorado arizona I love the Colorado-Arizona game because Arizona is a hitter-friendly ballpark, okay? Arizona is a hitter-friendly ballpark. So Arenado gets to go from his home, where he has been playing, at a hitter-friendly ballpark, to now going to Arizona, which is a hitter-friendly ballpark. It's been a good little bit since he's had one of his 20-plus DraftKings points nights. I think this is the night he does it here, guys. I honestly think this is the night that he does it. He crushes left-handed pitching. He has crushed left-handed pitching throughout the year so far this year. He is going against a lefty. Lock in Arenado for having an amazing game here, guys. I know he's expensive, but hey, trust me. There's a reason I'm putting him in the high five. I have huge confidence in him. Both Arenado and Freeman literally have the potential to get 60 DraftKings points by themselves. 60 DraftKings points by themselves. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just throw this out there. Let's say Scherzer gets 30. That's 90. Just off those three guys. And then Adelman, let's say Adelman puts us at 110. That is 110. Without counting our center, second base, I mean our catcher, second base, shortstop, and all three outfields. That is amazing upside potential, and I'm loving it. 
because not only is it high upside so far in this high five, but it seems very, very safe. None of these guys are very risky to me. Okay, I mean, I guess Adelman doesn't have that big name that makes you super confident. But trust me, guys, you look at how he's been pitching. You look at the team he's going against. And on top of that, they just played a doubleheader last night. I absolutely love Adelman, guys. And so far, so good. But let's finish it out on a high note, guys. A player that has been playing absolutely amazing. He just went for 30-plus DraftKings points last night. My boy, Owings. My boy, Owings. Chris Owings has been very, very solid lately, guys. And like I said earlier when I was talking about Arenado, Arizona is a very hitter-friendly park. With him being home in Arizona, going against a sorry pitcher. All right, he's going against a sorry pitcher. He is also, don't forget this, he is also going against the handed pitcher that he crushes. He is also facing a, I believe he is a lefty. I believe, no, he's facing a lefty. He's a righty facing a lefty, all right? He crushes lefties, guys. The research I've done, he does amazing. Most of his good, great games were against the lefties. And Owings has been absolutely dominating the ball recently. Like I said, he got 30-plus last night, okay? But I'm not putting him in my lineup because of the 30-plus last night. I'm putting him in the lineup because he's just been a very solid bat. As of late, he's really been getting the bat going, okay? He's at home in a very hitter-friendly ballpark. He's hitting a 312 batting average. I absolutely love Owings here, and I am running him up in nearly every single lineup. And there you go, guys. The hottest high five, the hottest five guys you'll build your lineup around in history of the world. You won't see a hotter high five, so love it. Check out the blog tomorrow for sure because I will be adding extra people that I have not talked about. All right? So we got Max Scherzer. We got Adelman, Freeman, Arenado, and Owings rounds out the top five. I absolutely love the high five guys, the five guys to build around. It leaves you with 3,500 left to go. With baseball, that is a piece of cake to go ahead and figure those cheap guys out. It's a piece of cake to get guys at 3500 that have been doing well. So it's no problem. You guys should do great. Absolutely great. I'm excited to see everybody's scores, man. I'm really feeling good about tonight. All right? So here we go, guys. You know what time it is. You know what we end the video with. Get a pen, get a piece of paper, or just if you have an amazing memory, just go ahead and put this in your memory bank. All right, I'm about to go through batters that have done absolutely amazing against the pitchers they are facing. All right, a player that I actually battled putting in the high five for a while, Nicholas Castellanos. Castellanos, you guys know I cannot pr pronounce a name, but he plays for Detroit. He has absolutely dominated Mike Pelfrey. He has gone four of ten for a home run and a 400 average. Run him up. Uh, J.D. Martinez, Justin Upton. CJ Cron, Cole Calhoun, we got uh, Mike Mustauskis, uh, Paolo Orlando, Joe Panique, Hunter Pence, Buster Posey, Jose Abreu, uh, Melky Cabrera, uh, Vesal Garcia, I cannot say his fucking name to save my life, but he plays for the White Sox guys, outfield, um, Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, Johnny Peralta, uh, we got Ryan Braun, Eric Thames has done well against the, he, who he's facing, Wellington Castillo, J.J. Hardy, uh, Jed Lowry, Adam Rosales, who is actually a consistent cheap option, guys. I like Rosales. Matt Holliday, uh, Ronald Torres has been very solid against Kevin Guzman going 5 of 12 for a 417 average, and he is fairly cheap most of the time. All right, uh, we got Matt Kemp has gone for two home runs against Chase Anderson in 17 at bats, hitting a 3.53 average. Um, let's go ahead and see who else we want to add in here. Jason Hay Hayward, Shin Su Chu, Elvis Andrews, and Nomar Mazar. That is the fucking whatever I call it. I'm black blanking out right now because it's late and I'm tired as hell. But that is it, guys. 
Good luck, everybody. I hope everybody absolutely kills it. Like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Remember, come talk DFS with us at greenlightdfs.com, the hottest new DFS website on the planet. Thank you guys for joining me, and I am out.